open space properties. Um, huh. And then essentially west of airport would be outside the city's planning right, area right. and in Boulder County out to Lyons. Um, did I, have I ever heard of the seen some stuff in the media about um, Save Our St. Brain, that group being against this because of some wildlife habitat that would be changed in some ways for that? I'm, I'm not sure that I've seen where against it. We've had conversations with that group, but I don't think it's in the bank swallow habitat, which exists mm -hmm. right over here um, between this building and Rogers Grove. That habitat exists on a cut bank right there, which is mm -hmm. what's necessary for them to provide their nesting opportunities, and it's a certain soil type, so a lot of them can do that as well. So um, Josh has been involved with this project since the beginning. One of the things Longman has really done is tried to make sure that we're looking at our natural resources, um, maintaining and enhancing as much as possible. So I think there are some opportunities for us to maintain habitat in that area. That, that specific site will definitely be impacted, but because we have the nut topography, there's, there's definitely ways we could look at that. So um, Josh, when I'm talking about where we are, are or not, are are not locked into any specific piece at this point because it has not been designed yet. Right. To date, what's been completed is really a conceptual level design for this reach, including some alternatives for how we would uh, cross Hover or bring the flows under Hover um, south of the existing creek. Um, so once we do secure funding, that's the time to really sharpen the pencil and take a look at environmental permitting, um, final design aspects, things like that before we would um, go to construction. So like David said, we have um, we are aware of potential issues, um, whether they're environmental or otherwise, and um, we've identified those, but until we can secure some funding and take a closer look and hire the right you know, consultants and subject matter experts, we're, we haven't taken that step yet. But we're also even looking at potentially um, constructing some Artificial sites, I was supposed to say that. If you've been over the Walden Ponds, uh, around one of the Golden uh, Golden Pine properties, that little gravel pit has some old gravel piles, and the bank's walls actually made nest right into that. So we're looking at literature from everyone from locally up to Canada that's done um, manufactured habitat to see if that's really an opportunity, and we'll be looking at that. So that's some of the staff that I work with that here, and then Bob Allen in operations to kind of see if we can construction that that if that nesting area was impacted from more than a season. That's where I think Josh has some flexibility in how we, not even the design, but how we write the contract as well so that we are impacting them over more than one season because they are obligated not to impact them during the nesting season because they do fall under the Migratory Bird Act. So if they're nesting there, we cannot impact them. Once they leave those nests, we can go in there and do the work. If we can get that done in one season, that would be great. If not, um, we're looking at opportunities to do something. Josh, did I? I think we captured it good. Great, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Other questions? One, one more if we can. So I think I saw one of the advantages that was suggested was that you'd be uh, securing the, the the interest rates over time. Do I have do I have that right for the bonds for like what we'd be paying in interest over time? <laughs> Um, this is where I have to look for our business services. Yeah, maybe it's more about the way the way the way the engineer here. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's a question. I think my, my yeah, I'm really trying to get to is that there's not much information on the financial side of this. What are the interest rates you're actually paying for? Uh, because as you may have noticed, their interest rates have changed a little bit right. in the past couple months. So I'm kind of curious in, in, into that. In that line. Uh, I can speak to that. The our finance department and staff are constantly looking for ways to address bonds that we've issued previously to see if we can get better interest rates. And so there have been yeah. uh, occasions, you know, we've bonded a bunch of different projects over the years in the city and they're continually not only paying them off, but also looking for opportunities to pay them down or to get, negotiate better interest rates. So mm. I think there's opportunities to be looking at that over the years that we're paying it off. I don't know if we even know what we're going to be tying into uh, yet. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Time for the thousand issue right. itself. Okay. And that's a question I can I can have it sent back to this group too. I can go to their business oh. services group to so we can get a better answer for you. Okay. This is on the ballot in a month, correct? No. And is twenty million the number? How do we know between interest rates and you haven't done the design? How did you pick twenty million? Um, so based on the conceptual level of engineering, we do have an estimate of it's right about twenty one million dollars for total for the project. Um, that includes roughly $15 million in storm drainage improvements 
and approximately five to six million dollars for um, out of the street fund for the bridge crossing on on uh, Hover. So combine those two storm drainage fund and, and street fund. That's uh, where we're estimating the twenty one million dollars. So in fact, uh, this ballot initiative for twenty million um, was initially you know what what staff has been talking to council about in the past has been fifteen million, and it's been increased to that. Uh, 20 million to try to provide some contingency for inflationary costs that we're seeing you know across the board um, also staff is actively looking for um, you know grant opportunities from the state and from the federal government uh, to help fund portions of the project as well we got a ton of money for the other part of really insane brain correct from the <coughs> of engineers or somebody right um, a lot of it through FEMA through the disaster recovery through the 2013 flood um, some through HUD as well through the same disaster in 2013 and then yes we are partnering with the Army Corps of Engineers through their 205 program um, for actually the, the upcoming reach that's funded from Boston to Sunset uh, that, right that's where I read that my yeah, direction yeah. is correct right here outside of right. Walton um, to reconstruct that that um, levee between the, the, the creek and the pond so we're ballot initiative is 20 million plus interest or is the total will the city will pay Twenty million over the bond issue, like I'm gonna, it's twenty million dollars over thirty years, plus whatever the interest is during the current time. Mm -hmm. It's just like the mortgage on your house. Okay, got it. Uh, and let me just add, um, sure. every every reach of the St. Resilient St. Brain project and every other capital improvement project in the city of Longmont for as long as Longmont's been around, the, the costs have been estimated the same way the costs are for this project. That's There's nothing different here. Okay. What's it, what's what might be different here is the outside expertise that Josh re referred to, the consultant that the city brought in to do this estimate. So the, the methodology for estimating costs are, are exactly the same as we've always done it. Every bond question that's been put in front of this electorate has been uh, uh, the calculations and, and the methodology have been exactly the same. Huh, okay. So this one's no different. And Josh is right. We originally estimated 15 million. And given what's happened with the cost of everything, right. we, we raised that by $5 million. So the council vote. Do we need to be doing something as a board here? Sending feedback or just this was a FYI? Just wanted to take the opportunity to uh, bring this information to the board. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Vote. Vote for what? Oh, uh, us yeah. individually. <laughs> yes. right. You're not going to tell me how to vote, right? Page. <laughs> Josh, where would the other one be? If you go back one page, back to the ballot landing page. So if you look back. Are you narrating, Scott? Uh, yeah. No, that wasn't me. That was Dallas. That was Dallas. Dallas. So, city charter amendments, if you uh, scroll down a little bit. These are Scott's web pages. Uh, visit the city charter amendments web page right there. And there'll be a web, uh, video. I'll be here to navigate. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. During the November 2022 election, the Longmont City Council is asking voters to consider two ballot issues that streamline our city's charter. The city's charter is the founding document that governs city operations. On the first ballot issue, changes include allowing the city to use electronic signatures on council documents, allowing city employees who don't live in Longmont to take part in city retirement boards, allowing administrative approval for low or no cost agreements with other governmental entities, aligning city election rules with the state's election rules. Here is the ballot wording the voters will see. Shall the City of Longmont Home Rule Charter be amended by revising sections 2.4, 3.3, 3.6, 3.9, 7.1, and 13.7 of the Charter to remove outdated language and allow for modernization of the conduct of city business? A yes vote means you are changing the City Charter to allow for streamlining these operations. A no vote means you are not changing the Charter and business will continue as it is currently conducted. Arguments for and against. Those in favor believe that amending certain sections of the city's charter would modernize and streamline city operations. Those against believe that residents should not change the charter, which is the master document for city governance. The Longmont City Council is also asking voters to consider changing the charter with respect to election vacancies. Currently, when a sitting council member wants to run for another position, such as mayor, during their term, if they win, a special election is needed to fill that vacancy. Council would like to offer an option where sitting council members can voluntarily end their term as they run for another. 
This will allow the city to run the election for both seats simultaneously and save the cost and labor of a special election in these cases. Here is the ballot warning the voters will see. Shall the City of Longmont Home Rule Charter be amended by revising Section 2.8 of the Charter to give elected city officials running for another elected office the option of prospectively vacating their current office to avoid the burden and expense of a subsequent election? What your vote means. A yes vote means you are changing the city charter to create this option regarding election vacancies. A no vote means you are not changing the charter and election vacancies will be filled through special election if a sitting council member is elected to another office halfway through their term. Arguments for and against. Those four believe making this change could save money and time by not needing to conduct a special election. Making this change could help ensure that a mayor and six council members are serving the city without unnecessary vacancies. Those against believe residents should not change the charter, which is the master document for city governance. It is not clear that candidates would use this option if it were available. We ask you to spend time researching the issues, ask questions if you have them, and most importantly, vote. Election day is November 8th. I have a question. What does the word prospectively mean in the charter? Um, in this, in this, in terms of this change? You. Well, well, let me just personalize it. This was I, this is my my motion. I, I looked right at you. Well, <laughs> had I had the op the option when I just declared I was running for mayor, I asked the question: Can I can I can I resign as of election day? If you win, if I no one way or another. So you would be out. I would be out. Win or not. And I, I would have done this. I would okay. have said, look, it'll save the city. When I, when I was elected in a special election, the, city, right. the cost of the city, as I recall, $65,000. And it was a three-month delay between when Brian Bagley was elected and when I was elected to fill his seat. I, for in the interest of saving money and continuity, uh, I would have resigned my Ward 1 seat. So this, had I been able to do it effective election day, so the city could have announced an opening. We, a candidate could have run concurrent, right, as right. A, in a special election. Had I won for mayor, it would have been continuity in Ward 1. Had I not, there would have been a new council member, and there's continuity moving forward, Got depending it. on what happens with the other candidates okay. in the race. But, but the perspective here is the proposal wasn't to make it a requirement. So had uh, Joan Peck and I both done that, and we had the option, there would have been continuity. We would not have needed the special election. We wouldn't have gone a year without a vacancy on the council. And, you know, we would have kept, you know, moved forward. As I guess that was my question, was whether you are vacating your seat, whether you win or lose, yes. or only if you well, don't get to be mayor. You, you, yeah, that you kind would, of thing. You would vacate your that seat, win or lose. Yes. Great. Okay. The, 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 what the current rules require, if, if I were to, to announce that I'm going to resign, I'd have to do it. That day or a day six a days enough prior to the election, right? Ah. For a candidate to declare, right? Right, and I and personally, I felt like if you're going to do it, if you're going to do it, you got to do it six months ahead of time to give somebody to really run a you know. And meanwhile, you got no council. So now you have a vacancy. Months, now right, you have, right. I didn't feel like that was fair to Ward One folks. Yeah. Now the Ward One folks would have said, "Get them out of there." <laughs> <laughs> well, some of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I just didn't, you know, I just felt like I, my obligation was not to vacate the seat that I was elected to unless I knew that there would be continuity. Okay. But that's all this, all this does is create the option for a sitting council member who wants to run for mayor to say, I'm going to resign, run a special election that saves both money and offers continuity. Well, maybe I'm dumb, but that all should be explained better in whatever ballot you know, background info is. Somehow. I'm not certain what's in the blue book. Yeah, I don't. I haven't read it either, but I hope that it, that's clear. Yeah, I don't know. Dan, I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I guess that's something for me to book investigate book. too. Thank you. I appreciate. I now know what's going on, but I hope the rest of the city does. Yeah. Any other questions from board members? Yeah. Great. Okay. Josh Scott, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Appreciate it. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and maybe just do a quick introduction of a topic here that we have on this list. We've talked about in the past, and it's about um, the historic Dickens barn that is out on 
Highway 119 in Slayton. And in that development, the goal was to remove the barn and the buildings. Um, but the Historic Preservation um, Board has recommended there's a way that we can keep that, we should do that. We have looked at that barn and looked at its significance and have found that it really does kind of check all the boxes of being significant um, to Longmont and our historic sort of settlement of this area. What we're really looking at is the fact that if, if the developer was able to give, donate this, this building and some property to give us access to it, would the city be willing to take that? The thing with getting something given to the city, it means there's weeds associated, there's structures associated, there's safety associated with it, there's long-term maintenance associated with that. So is this something that it would be valuable enough to the city to invest dollars from operations and maintenance and facilities group to take this on uh, to try and make sure that we preserve a structure within our community that has a lot of significant value? That's kind of my big picture piece on it. I have looked at this and um, I think that from the open space and park side, we have some resources that could help with that. Um, but we would like to see if this group feels that this property has value to the city. And I'm going to introduce <laughs> <laughs> our planning director. Glenn, do you want to? Yeah, uh, Glenn Van Wagen, And then we have a couple of HPC members, our chairman, Steve Lane. And Doug Barner is a commissioner as well. And then uh, Jennifer... Uh, Hewitt Apperson is our liaison to the HPC. So maybe just a little bit more background is um, 7-Eleven once built on this site. They got a conditional use permit approval with uh, the requirement that HPC approve a preservation plan. And what we were thinking was signage, something that kind of explained the really significant history of the Dickinson and the Mary Allen uh, homestead here on the site. Um, the HPC saw some of the same reports that you did, and this is really rather unique in that it hits all four criteria for uh, uh, historic designation on the national um, stage, basically. Um, and I think I was just kind of breezing through that report uh, this evening and, and saw that it, it really says it parallels the history of Longmont prior to anything being here and closely tracks kind of the development of the community of Longmont as well. Um, some other kind of interesting facts is um, uh, Mary Allen um, came here with her husband and owned the property. His name was Alonzo and they gave birth to William Dickinson. He uh, started the first bank of Colorado, I think, in the area and the Dickinson um, Opera House is named after him. He started that. Um, Mary uh, divorced Alonzo, which is kind of unusual, back in 1870. And then because of that, she was able to actually acquire the property that was originally acquired under the homestead. It's one of the few reasons a single woman could acquire uh, property at the time. So um, I don't know, Steve, if you want to add anything. To I guess part of the other piece that we looked at is that it wasn't, it had nothing to do with their development. It was well outside of everything that they want, that the property owner wanted to um, utilize. So it would just be torn down, you know, by default. The structure's really not in terrible condition. It's, it's actually in pretty decent shape. It would take some, the city's done some research and you probably would have written your packet in terms of some dollars that need to go towards um, restoration and, st uh, and stabilization, but there's also some grant money that could be available through the state historical fund to, to help pay for that. Um, and it's it's got you know it's got some architectural significance in terms of its shape and style and, and, and its status. So when we think about Longmont history, a lot of people pay attention to downtown and the east and west side neighborhoods, but we've got a pretty rich agricultural history. And that's really in danger of being, you know, swallowed up and lost. So we just were really pushing to uh, see if there's a way to preserve that. And it felt like it integrated with your trail system, and we could have kind of a giant win-win here, where, you know, I, I, 
completely acknowledge that we're passing this torch on to another board to, that, that there's some maintenance costs associated with it. But, but in terms of acknowledging Longmont's agricultural history and you know, preservation of open space and what people do when they get on the trail and having an opportunity to have you know, sort of historical interpretation, it felt like just a really, uh, an opportunity that is probably not going to come along um, too many times. So we very much appreciate your willingness to consider it. So you hope this board will do what? As I understand it, we're hoping that you are going to uh, accept taking on that piece of property as part of the the park system. And that's uh, I, yeah. Go I ahead. Apologize. Yeah. Just before we go, I think what we really has been talked about is having that property donated as city property, and then we'd be able to designate. That's one of the things I think is this conversation has evolved. I think not locking into if it's an open space dedication or park desk dedication, but if we could lock it in something that would preserve that property, a city owned property, and then we could look at potential funding mechanisms from something more than just one fund. So I didn't mean to step your toes, right? So I want to make sure we. Please, please. The, the, the biggest piece that, that, that I think is as far as staff So here. we should be writing a letter to the city council to say, go for it, or who's making this call? At this point, who I mean, who is who talk are we about how, who really makes the final decision? Well, I think it depends on what we call it. Um, if it's open space, I think it falls to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. Um, as we talked with uh, Jeff and David, um, there's so much cultural richness here. We could certainly call it um, a cultural uh, um, piece of property. Um, it is also an important kind of view shed on, on Highway 119. Um, it's one of the first things you see as you come in Longmont, so it's kind of a gateway statement. So, um, and um, just a little bit of background. So, uh, Jennifer's been working with the applicant. They're not the owners yet, but they soon will be, and they are willing to give us, it's roughly five acres, the barn and approximately 70 grand to get the barn so it doesn't fall down. I saw that in the statement, 15 plus 65 or 55 or whatever those numbers were needed to keep it from yeah. falling down. Yeah. Right, right. And as Steve said, we'll, we'll look for additional funding. But I think we don't want to step on your toes either um, at this point. So we're hoping uh, the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board just, I guess, votes in support of accepting the dedication. Yeah, that's what I was that's, curious that's about. I'm thinking is it accepted the dedication right. city and that staff kind of figure out the best way to then yeah. categorize it and then we can move forward. I think for Jeff and Glenn and myself we've looked at, I think if we can get that stabilization done, it gives us time to really use our new grant coordinator to try to find dollars to really do long-term um, planning for that property. As, as Steve any, said, I'm sorry. Oh, I just want to has there been any estimate of what the sort of long you know, ongoing maintenance for this property might be, and also, is there any chance of getting, I mean, it sounds like the um, applicant is willing to make an initial contribution, but, you know, with, like, a conservation easement, there's usually an, an endowment that goes along with the conservation easement that provides for at least some of the ongoing maintenance. Is there any potential, like, a contribution toward ongoing, like, an endowment for ongoing maintenance? Be honest, we haven't thought that through, but that's a, that's a great vehicle to make sure it stays the way it is. Um, I'm not sure what the maintenance responsibilities that come with the conservation easement. Well, it's just the endowment is usually a fund that is available and kind of dedicated you okay. know, for the ongoing sort of in perpetuity in the case of an easement um, maintenance that's needed. So. And people can donate to it then? Well, it would, it's like it usually comes from that case. owner. <laughs> yeah, no, it usually comes from that, um, the property owner. So. Mm. <laughs> I don't know that the applicant would be, I mean, the applicant has been jumping through town hoops for quite some time on this. Um, I've, just, I've spoken with them quite a bit. Um, you know, they're, I don't know how amenable they would be to an ongoing end endowment. Beyond the you know seven thousand stabilization cost, um, to be perfectly honest, this is a particular property where um, essentially the the 
oh, the, the current owner of the property is kind of an all or nothing deal. They, you know, you and I have properties where we only wanted to buy the corner. Um, but the owner of the property was like, nope, it's all or nothing. So they're trying to figure out how they can deal with this the best way possible. I just really appreciate our chair recognizes this. Sometimes it's like, well, why don't you take something that's free? And that, that free does come with a long term maintenance cost. Mm -hmm. Um, I think in the, the near term, what we really want to do is probably with that stabilization, stabilization dollars is put really that piece in place. And then honestly, from the operational side of it, I can see our park staff or open space staff that has that weed skill management to go in there and try to stay up on the weeds, maybe do some mowing for fire protection, and then probably doing some pretty minor fencing around it um, to make sure people aren't going to that structure until it's stabilized. So I think we have a pretty low threshold. Um, until we actually do get some grant funding in place to try to do some long-term planning, and I think we'd probably get into a CIP project. I, I mean, by the way, we, we went yeah. there, you know, yes. with that, and I think you know, it's definitely an interesting property. I mean, looking at property. that picture with the trail already, yeah. you know, a stone's throw away, hopefully no stones are thrown, <laughs> <laughs> the trail already there, there. Yeah. and signage possible, it, it seems like a winner to me. I mean, it's like, duh, why not, you know? Well, I, mean, I think the concern is, does it become something that, you know, are there trade-offs we should be aware of if the city takes on this project? Are there other projects that the city is already working on that, you know, could be compromised by that. So, I mean, that would be my only concern is not knowing what trade-offs we might the only The only thing I would throw out there, this is my own personal um, confidence in some of our staff, if you give Jeff and his staff a chance to rent anything in the city, they'll make money off of it. But yeah, I, I think there's there's probably long-term ways we could look at you know, doing something that has a greater value than just be sitting there with that too. David and I both believe that this is in the city's best interest to, to do this. Um, we don't have all the answers, no. um, but we feel like what we know today, it is in the city's best interest to do this. So that sidewalk, I'm representing Scott here now, is going to go up to Union Reservoir. Right. Yep. And what does the city own already or will own or what's the property boundary is going to look like? Is it going to be contiguous with this five acre plot that the barn no. sits on? No. Well, yes, yes. But there'll be a gulch in between. Yeah. Uh, that stream that this, I see. Yeah, spring gulch. Gotcha. It does get flows. And so you won't be able to go from the sidewalk here over to the barn unless you go out to the highway. Well, or unless someday you get a grant to build a bridge. I right, mean, and I can think of probably 30 different places around the city that are more. more I'm getting it, but, right. but yes. If the future the citizens may get on yes. a bandwagon. Who knows, right? That's right? Possible. Yes. <laughs> we will own, the, we'll, we'll own land on both sides of the gulch. And yes, it could be that a bridge is installed at some point in the future. Uh, and then I, I'm not sure that, I think pretty much what I'm hearing, Jennifer, correct me if I'm wrong, is that 7-Eleven is gonna sort of own this, much. We're taking everything else. Yep. Right. Which goes up to the top of the picture? Goes, it does not include this lot. This is a private lot, but it okay. actually includes land up here. Sort of comes like this. Yeah, the property. Ah. Yeah, it kind of goes, yeah, you kind of see it goes yep. like this, and then it kind of hooks around here. And so basically, 7 Eleven is interested in this. <laughs> Yes. And I, yeah, again, there might be some details on where we yeah, talk about, but I'm taking on additional. So yeah, I see it yeah. talking to the greenway or the pathway there, or at least being up against it, so that makes sense to me. Right. And we talked to Glenn about if we were going to carve this lot off, making sure that those future generations definitely have some place to park and we have, we have access. And, and again, we're not committing park dollars at this point in time. It's just trying to work with. Uh, with the uh, historic preservation group to uh, allow this to happen, and then um, we will work on with uh, to stabilize, and then we'll work on grants. So, no commitment from parks or open space to go beyond the limited maintenance that they would do. Okay. So, I mean, the question is a dedication or? to the city. That's, I'm just wondering yeah. what the right language is for a motion. I think yeah. dedication to the city at this point in time, we can work that, that yeah. out. Okay. Or support the dedication to the city. And this is to go to city council or to the HPC committee or just out there in the world? Um, right now, I think we'll actually define it on their subdivision plan, um, which is mayor sites. OK. 
Okay. I don't know that we need a separate city council action. Okay. I mean, usually we make recommendations to council. That's kind of our job, so to say. But we're, I mean, if all we need is a, hey, we're in favor, to whom it may concern. I mean, I don't know, you know, that kind of thing. I, I'm not sure how to go. But anybody got thoughts about I think if you like, just do a general motion that says you're. Sizing support. Yeah. Support. I think yeah. not directed to anyone. I think you'd be okay. Can I ask one last question before we go make an motion? So wouldn't the structure of the applicant in 11 block the view of the barn from the highway? Just looking at the, I didn't walk the property, I was in the booth, but I'm just trying to understand. The like, 7 would be right about in here. I think the yeah. views will be coming in this direction. Correct. Right. Right. Okay. You're going to be looking at it from the lens of like through a gas station, right? Like in the background or that lens? It'll be, be to the right. Go over to Street view, and I think you can actually probably look even. I, I don't sure. I drive that every day, and I, I don't think it will be. It's going to be further to the um, south, yeah. and then to the. <laughs> there you go. So the seven eleven is to be here, so you will get to see the barn before you're up against seven eleven. Seven eleven has chickens out back. Okay, so it's going to look like seven eleven. Okay. Hopefully the reason why I'm asking that question is clear. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. We're not reserving it for nothing. We're reserving it for oh, just yeah. those trees behind the seven eleven. Yeah. 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 Right. Old was on on the barn side instead of the seven eleven side. That's late. It's late ten, right? Because that people. That's not like a highly cut road. It's just not like. This is actually. Well, this is annexed into the city now. With the city only has land up to, or well, I guess it's annexed up to here. There. This road. Right. This is all county road. Oh, uh, okay. And there's not currently any plans on it to change that. Okay. It's dirt. It'll become paved. Okay. Well, it'll become paved up to it the northern edge of the settlement. Yeah. Right. Uh, I don't but think I mean, we're making any improvements over that. Yeah. 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 So we pay that for something. Oh, yeah. After yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Any other questions? Would anyone like to make a motion that Crab expresses support for the city to accept the donation of this property? I move that the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board expresses our support for the donation of the barn and the land. To the city. To the city. To the to me. Fine French. You can see the gas in the morning, be right next door. I am yeah, and slurpees. Okay. Okay. Do we have a second? Yeah, you want to well let's hear it back. Motion that crab expresses their support for the donation. Of the barn and the land to the city. Does that work for you guys? I think so. I second that. Okay. <laughs> All right. All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Great. We look forward to hearing how it goes. Great. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. Oh, yeah. No, thank you guys. It's, yeah, it's yeah, interesting. Thanks for really explaining it to us in detail. Well, it's a lot of work you did, too. I mean, it's a lot of stuff. Not a lot of pages. <laughs> yeah. I have a related question. I don't know if you, maybe since you're here. Um, does the city have any properties that, or any like um, recognition of the indigenous system of this area? Like the indigenous history, tribal use of this prior. I mean, it feels like historic preservation would, I mean, that would be a great, if you're not thinking about that already, it would be a great aspect to be thinking about. Yeah, I don't know that there are. One of, Glenn mentioned four criteria in this particular property. One of them is archaeological, and, and it came up with, with just an immensely rich archaeological site, but from the standpoint of, of right. you know, Agriculture history, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so still not that far yeah. back. I think it's I don't know. It's not my area of expertise. We do have a board member whose whose focus is archaeological history. So we can we can certainly ask her and see what yeah. um, what 
she knows about it. I would appreciate that. That's that. It's not that far back. It's the same era that we're talking about that Chief Naiwa was here, right. and we keep putting kind of a moving company on on top of some of the land. We have a BioLife, like plasma donation center on some of this land. Um, it's time, it's so far beyond time for that to happen. So I would love that to happen. I can give a little update with the county here too, but um, Carmen Ramirez and myself have been working um, with the Northern Arapaho Council has been given a lot of direction to work with, with that group, but also the city of Boulder, um, Denver, Boulder County have recognized that with the, the tribal history here is more than Northern Arapaho, there's lots of tribes in this area we've been working to um, try to reconnect with these lands and try to work with local municipalities on how they can um, not have to go to every municipality to talk about it. We want to get a collection permit to do um, medicinal medicines. We want to go do a ceremony on a property. How we can do that more collaboratively with those tribes. That's something we're working on right now, and I'd be happy to bring an update on that. There's going to be actually a training, I believe, next I'm week. Sure. Yes, at the museum. So the museum has probably a little closer tie to some of the um, historic pieces, but again, I think the ongoing pieces, we're trying to keep that conversation going. We're doing more with the tribes to make sure that we're including them in some of these conversations. Same way if we buy an open space and we go to the public and say, well, what should we name it? We want to make sure we're reaching out to the tribal members of this area and say, we want you to have a voice in that too, even though you may not be geographically next door to this property where our community is, um, but we recognize that there's a cultural connection to this property. You know, we do not with commercial properties as we're concerned because that would be more you um, as we're considering the sale and the use in it, you know the changes of use and taking of just uh, west or just east of Main Street um, south of the creek that is tribal land and now it's going to be drive through um, you know do we do we consider that? Do, do does the planning commission ever consider what what was here, the historic significance of what was here, if there wasn't a brick and mortar structure like the Dickens Opera House? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, on most every property, we do have a survey that's done um, from a historic standpoint. Um, we have surveys of a lot of sites um, already. Um, so if any of that rises to the surface, it's something that is considered and it may require HPC to um, get involved. Uh, I haven't been here that long, so I don't know if we have done what we have done in the past or whether it's ever come up. No, not to my knowledge. I think it hasn't. I think that's why it's moved far back to maybe a couple years ago. It'd be great, David, if you yeah. could, we, we can add that as a, just an update. I've heard a little bit about what City of Boulder was doing. I didn't know it was sort of a a broader effort, so maybe we can add that as a future topic, just to understand. Yeah. I, I did want to say that the um, interpretive displays at the Samson Ranch Visitor Center, that does touch on some of the indigenous people uh, that were here in this area. It's somewhat small, but it's there. So there is something at the Samson Ranch uh, Visitor Center that folks want to see. Great. Great. Um, we have another spot for Thank you. Question. I did have a good day. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Have a great day. Okay. Anything else on that topic? Great. Great. Thanks so much to you guys all for taking time to join us. Can, can you be so rude as to have to leave? They can, not you though. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even rude. Let me show you something. <laughs> they all hit the thank, uh, thank you. Yeah, so something new to this board uh, we started this uh, during the June appointments is conducting having the board and staff conduct interviews of candidates and so what we would ask is if two of the board members could volunteer to work with David and I to do interviews as we come up with uh, 
candidates that I think it was extended to the 24th of October, something like that. We have uh, just about three weeks to conduct the interviews. Uh, we bring that back to um, Kraft to make our recommendations. And then once you approve those recommendations, it would go to council. And uh, council uses that as part of their decision making when uh, they're appointing board members. I'll tell you that my first experience with that was with the golf board. And uh, I, I really enjoyed it uh, for a couple of reasons. It allowed us to have some uh, input on who was on our board. And it really gave me the opportunity to work with a couple of the golf board members that I really wouldn't have had the opportunity to get them to get to know them better. And so it was a really good experience. So anybody interested in... So does city council still do the same process that I think we all remember? Yes. Yeah. Right. They, this is just preliminary then, yeah. or ahead of that in time? Or, uh, is this like a well, here's process? the difference. Okay. okay. Um, the previous process, we decide correct mm -hmm. what you need. In this case, you decide what you need, and then you make a recommendation. We're only going to interview the people you recommend. Ah, uh, okay. so rather so than if you have if you have two openings and you interview five people, you'll make two recommendations. At least that would be my preference. I think in some cases you've got people who you just might say, "Gosh, either of these are good candidates." Um, but but I'm not interested. I don't think the council's interested in interviewing five candidates for two spots. You do the interviews. The council still wanted to have a, you know, a say in this. Well, so it, we would have required. No, I don't know <laughs> it's required. Whatever, but yeah. Um, so we'll interview who you recommend, and it'll okay. be, and they'll also enjoy a five-minute interview. <laughs> but, but it'll be after they've been properly vetted by whoever this board okay. believes ought to be in the process. So there is a qualitative change then. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a. Very yeah. I, I think I'm interested too, but I'm also curious, like, what is, how many, how many are we talking here? Talking like five or like four or five hundred? Yeah. <laughs> well, when we, I wouldn't think it would yeah. be four or five hundred, but yeah. if that many people applied for the yeah. board, yeah. that's <laughs> what the thing is. <laughs> Generally, this board has more candidates than a lot of the other boards, mm -hmm. and so it could be six, seven, or eight, okay. is my guess. Okay. And we scheduled them for half hour, 45 minutes is what we've done with the uh, golf board. Oh, like they give a half hour interview? Yes. Wow. Yeah. So wow. I didn't think I'd get any by you guys. <laughs> yeah, that's quite different than our experience. Yes. Right? I wouldn't have made it through a half hour interview. <laughs> 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 I see right through anyway. Like, yeah. Phew, feel bad for these people. Over the course of like a month, mm -hmm. two weeks. Mm -hmm. Probably, yeah. <laughs> We we only had three people apply for the golf board for two two openings, yeah. and we did them all in one afternoon. Right. So David and I will work with your schedule and make sure that it works for you as well as the other candidates. Could I be a sub in case one of these these folks? Has, does not have the ability to make an interview. Does that make sense? That makes because me feel happier. Yeah, well, reason. because I, 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 like, I want to be down. my schedule looks terrifying, so something about me. Well, so, in light of that and being a retired guy, sure, I'd help. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, <laughs> my schedule wide chance. open. <laughs> <laughs> you were the same golf guy that said you had a busy day today. <laughs> you got the golf and tennis. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Recreation schedule might be <laughs> <laughs> So, could we go with Paige and, and Nick and then have? Oh, sure. I didn't realize you were already volunteered. So I had like semi volunteered. Oh, I, think, oh. I think that you might be in a better position given the. I didn't mean to step on toes. No, if you guys want to do it, go for it. That's up to you all. Yeah, I mean, I think we. We jumped in. Okay, <laughs> I didn't catch that. But Sorry. I think we, if we want, need backup signatures. Okay, and then Aaron and Dan. Okay, thank you. Anything else on that? You'll just be in touch with us. And yeah. Slip in. Once, once we uh, hear from the city clerk about four candidates. Out. And when does it close? It was the 
24th or 26th of this month. Don't hold me to that. I don't remember who we're losing. I think Jeff and Minoj yes. are, okay. uh, are up. And they can reapply. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. They, if, if they both apply, we would need to interview them as well. Just to be fair, and, and the other thing that we do is that the interviews are recorded so that if council would ever want to go back and look at those, they would have access to them. Yeah. Well, I'm glad they're doing that. Because I had started doing that I could never imagine how council could remember all of those people they saw for five minutes on like all the different boards. They couldn't. That's part of the reason. <laughs> That's how we got through. That's how we're all here. That's right? why we got through. <laughs> yeah. I really applied for the golf board, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> here you are. <laughs> okay. Should we move to old business? Sure. So, just as a reminder, I think we talked about this at the. June meeting, and, and I don't have a, a lot of, to update, but just kind of let you know where things are at. At the June meeting, you all had mentioned that you didn't like the quality of life tax name, and so we are working on a new name for that, and that will come in the next several weeks because it's my understanding we're going to council on the 15th of November it is to make a presentation to uh, you all so that uh, you can give us direction of are you crazy or yeah go go forward kind of thing. And can um, you just yep. say a little bit about what yep. you will present? Well I'm not presenting well, number what? one. <laughs> <laughs> At least I don't know that I am. Um, You'll probably do all the short stuff. Right? <laughs> yeah yeah so multiple divisions are going to be involved. Uh, the library um, is just uh, finalizing a feasibility study. Uh, part of that study has identified that uh, there's a need for additional funding in general for the library as well as the potential to um, do two branch libraries. One would be a smaller uh, storefront type of, of library and the other one could be up to 30,000 square feet. Um, that could have maker space or, or provide services that are not currently available at the, the, the Longmont Library now. Uh, recreation, we've talked about uh, including a 90,000 square foot uh, new recreation center. The, the potential of that new, one of the, that larger library branch could be connected to uh, the, the recreation center. Um, museum has also just completed a uh, master plan that includes a, an expansion to the museum that would be also be included. They also have uh, some donations that would help uh, fund uh, some of the expansion that they would be doing. And then there would also included is um, additional funding for parks um, to help Build more parks is, would be my hope, as well as doing some things that are currently not funded. Did, did I miss anything with that, David? And then kind of the uh, other thing that's being talked about that, that could be included is the Performing Arts Center. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, a number of groups in town had done a study to see about bringing a joint venture is what my understanding is, where it'd be a public-private uh, uh, partnership that would um, bring in the, the performing arts. Again, that, that's kind of out of David and I's area, but I know Harold and the city leadership is talking about how that would fit in. Right now, we've provided all of our estimates for the costs of, of those projects. And uh, the finance staff, financial staff are working on bringing those numbers together and what it would look like to fund uh, that many projects. And that could be done both by property tax and sales tax. 
and that information will be presented to council and we will get their direction on moving forward with all of it or what their priorities are. So kind of a quick summary. The, the next step, if, if council supports that, would be that we would start doing a public process to start going out to the community and, and talking about what, what those projects look like, some of the things that might be included in a rec center or uh, another library or, or, or park, as well as uh, um, the, the thought would be is that we would bring uh, the boards together, advisory boards, and do some joint meetings to talk about how we support each other in moving forward with um, the election. And if Ben will bear with me, because he gets tired of this story. Um, but when we built the, the rec center, we did bring... You want me to tell it? <laughs> we, we brought a number of the boards, advisory boards, together. And it was really a good way to have each of the boards ed educate them, each other, on what their needs were. And we feel like that's a, a, a very important piece of, of what we'd be doing with this um, possible tax as well. So that's kind of where we're at right now. And you would also at some point talk to us about sort of how the board can engage yes. in yeah. support of the ballot initiative or in the public process initially and then subsequently. Yes, yeah. Remind me, how big is the current rec center at Quail? 63,500. So 90,000 is bigger. Yes. One and a half X. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And we were going to do some kind of yeah. polling of the audience. Right. Has we that are, happened? Or? No, it hasn't. But so we, we arbitrarily decided 90,000, or you guys did? Or? Yes. Based on what we believe the need is, we are about ready to go to bid for a uh, master plan feasibility study to help us identify that and there will be some public process. For so that. council approved money for a feasibility study? Yes, they did. Yeah. Well, it's been a while since we've met, so yeah. we're kind of behind the times yeah. here. So we had $40,000 budgeted in 22 to do the master plan. And then there is a recreation impact fee that is collected when developments or, or homes are, are built. Uh, that, that fund has uh, a little over $2 million in it. We have asked and have, appro have appropriated 150000 to help with, towards this study. Okay, gotcha. Specific to the recreation center, center. piece. Correct. Kind of like bigger. before pool and ice and kind of like before yes. the rec center 20 years ago. Yes. Got it, okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Councilman Waters, is there anything you want to add since this is kind of... No, I'm looking forward to, to seeing what the staff brings. I, think, I personally think there's a variety of ways to think about this. Yeah. And I maybe want to chat and find out what you're thinking before we get into that public discussion uh, in, in how to cobble together something that might be doable and a little less breathtaking in terms of cost and, and, and put recreation services, the museum, the library together and then parse um, the, the library, or I'm sorry, the museum recreation services together, parse the performing arts center and the library a little differently. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, but there's a variety of ways to think about it. So yeah. The good news is we're thinking about it, and we're about ready that to get news. into a public discussion. So, yeah. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. It's on a date before council. Yeah. My son says we need to host a museum music. <laughs> so, so a bunch of kids in this town. Extremely boring, and uh, we need an actual music venue. Okay. I agree. Oh, you just wanted to put this down. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Anything? Anything else on that? Nope. Great. Okay. So we'll move to discussing items from the packet. Does anyone have any questions um, or clarifications on items that were included in the packet? Yes, I see. Do you have a 
Yeah. Um, so Parks and Forestry Operations, good timber. Um, says that there's installation of cameras at various park locations. Feel obligated to ask why we're having cameras survey us in our parks. So I'll, I'll take that. I've been involved in this process. This is a ongoing challenge that we've been facing in our parks as far as vandalism, graffiti, um, destruction of city property, and trying to maintain how people find those, following those rules and rights even after hours when we don't have staff out there. So it's been ongoing cost the city is trying to figure out how we do it with staffing how we do it to the replacement of those facilities that get destroyed how we manage the costs associated with the graffiti removal and it's been a conversation between public safety the parks department and city manager's office and this was the, the decision to um to address these with cameras we've used cameras on small scale basing paths in areas where we have had problems so we'll be putting these cameras in parks that um we know we have known problems right now with the idea of trying to build this out throughout the, the city, uh, from the downtown area to our parks as well. Uh, it's being done with a grant that um, comes out of a group in North, North um, New Orleans, actually. And they actually will keep the data for us. So it's not even people sitting around watching this stuff happen. It's kind of a third party server that puts on, kind of keeps it safe and away from just people being able to watch and survey or use it the way they want to. But we can go back and we see things that happen in the park. We can go back and look at that and try to figure out um, how we hope to go about that. Okay. I just feels like that that should be a public discussion. It has yeah, been. It has been. Yeah. I was part of that yeah. presentation yeah. we had. Come to, come to council. I, I do come to council sometimes, you know, but <coughs> I can't come to all of them. I hadn't heard that. That's a that's a pretty big invasion of personal privacy. So the, the piece again, I think I, as we had these conversations because it was inter I mean, internally with people in parks and parks background. Yeah. I think there's that those ideas as as well um, as we had those conversations. Of if it's the ring camera across the street, if it's the GoPro cam on the kids' skate helmet, if it's the bank ATM, you're on camera pretty much everywhere. It's just putting that together. So, together. Terrifying, so trying to organize. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I did that, and I and I'm will, I know that because I came with the board, and I'm willing to be on camera. To say that it's a little, it's a little scary that we're now and surveilling we're, even more. You know, it's just I'm, I'm just gonna put it out there. That is scary. I mean, I look at the, the, the things that we're, uh, we're trying to mitigate, and um, it, it's a, like a whole idea of what is government for? Is it for safety or control? And. And I would say there's been a pretty strong driving piece of this conversation that it really is for safety, that our community, um, almost on a weekly basis, you cannot use a large majority of our restrooms because of vandalism. On uh, almost a daily basis is the tagging, the graffiti, and the vandalism in our parks that's causing staff to not be able to provide for safe manicure upkeep of parks because they're, they're focusing on corrective action against neighbors that really should be putting sites in our park. Keeping them safe. So I really do think it was a conscious decision on. Yeah, I would I would argue that graffiti is not a safety issue, but it's. And we've had in some of the parks for quite some time. We've had cameras. Uh, all of our recreation facilities have camera and yeah. cameras and have for ten plus years, if not longer. Uh, again, we don't have somebody that's sitting and watching it. It's there. Something happens, we can go back for the record and try to identify who caused the issue. Yeah. I think Dan has something in the notes. Did we miss Dan Wolford going away? That was in last month's. And yes. Yeah, it's like, how did that happen? Was that when you guys were at the movie the other day when I saw you, Dave? No, we we actually just did a little, yeah, that was somebody else. Okay. This was actually Dan. We actually did a little going away party for him out at, at Union. Um, it was a nice kind of celebration, but it was 
Um, he didn't want a whole lot, but it kind of got hard. Right. So with Ben's background and experience, he kind of snuck that in at the end of the previous month's thing. It's like, wait a minute here. Okay, wow, that's a big deal. Yeah, it really is. And I'll, as we go forward, I'll throw another one out there. This is not where it belongs. It's probably in the staff updates. But Kathy Cron is now going to Erie. So I'm down Dan and Kathy. So mm -hmm. um, kind of those people that keep me looking good and know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so we're on a like hiring Dan. binge right now. Yes. yes. I mean, um, well, I think you open tap. That's what I'm trying to get done as fast as I can. Yes. And I appreciate Ben's updates, but I didn't see when did the bathrooms close again in the park? So is that you guys or is that that's, that's, us? that's us? Okay. And it should have been third Nine. Saturday in October. Yeah. So it was yesterday. It should have been the first Monday. The tennis we're guys were asking on Sunday, I, we think they're open, and people went and used yeah. it, but then we're like, what date is it quit? Yeah, it's, the second it's weekend happening. of October, which was yesterday was the last one. And why okay. did they close? Pardon? Why did they close? Because the pipes freeze. Yeah, we can. I mean, they just pick an arbitrary day, or they go on in April and off in October, kind of like daylight savings. Let's have that discussion. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 just always seemed like when I was in, like the the good months to use the park with your kid where it's not hot, you know, right. it's just like you're like, where's my kid gonna be? And it's a conversation that we may. I mean, it's there's a big couple pieces with that. So Steve will tell you that we do design our, our some of our parks with ways to keep those heated. What we found though is that probably some of the new technology that probably is out there right now. All it takes is one night with the heater going out and. You're hundred thousand dollars in the hole. Exactly. Oh, so um, that that's kind of the rubric. So even when we design them, so we can kind of keep them heated. If, if something does happen to them, that it really is a huge cost and, and it's out for for long term. Um, there are some technologies that can probably do you know pretty instantaneous notifications to someone that we have a, a, a leak. Um, there also is the amount of use that we've historically seen. And there is a cost benefit piece to it. Keeping those restrooms clean and having that contract is a significant cost to the, the residents to keep those open year round for a much smaller use group. As we start seeing things stay warmer and those nicer days getting extended and having more people in the parks and those colder days lessening, um, we may want to start taking a look and say, is it worth that additional cost to do that? But right now, it really is a budgetary piece but also sort of how we design our parks and the technology to keep them from freezing them. Okay, composting toilets work really well, but at not freezing. And I think that that's something else I think is a probably more of a community piece that people have certain expectations in Longmont Parks. And we work, work continually looking at how we set standards of the facilities that we have. But I, I do think that our community, once you have something, it's harder to take it away yeah. and coming in with that. I just talked to the director up in Breckenridge and they're just looking at putting restrooms in for the first time in their parks. Um, and that's one of the things that they're looking at too. Okay. But coming in with something like that, I think we have nothing to a composting as opposed to, you know, the, the, the neighborhood yeah, that, 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 yeah, the, yeah. the neighborhood that gets the first <laughs> composting toilet. It's like, well, why did all these other neighborhoods end up with something that's that we were expecting. Um, is this the plan for all the parks or whether there's a there, that is a little like there. I'll, I'll jump online here. We're talking community yeah. park, yeah. So community park, this was the neighborhood parks and then the community parks. That's probably why the tennis was open if it was at Quail. So that'd be a little bit longer window of the community parks. Well okay. this was actually this was actually a Pratt and car. Oh okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. or there are restrooms. That's right. Quail has a Porta potty, or the rec center is a hundred yard walk. That, you know, that people do. But yeah, the difference is neighborhood and community yeah. parts are a little bit different, right? Oh, cool. And and those facilities are designed with heaters in them. And they're all designed with heaters. Mm -hmm. so. um, I also noticed under the I like to feel like I'm the Tim Tankers one, sorry, but um, that's why I only ask questions about the things I have questions about. And I noticed on um, the Union Reservoir section that on um, beaver mitigation, um, that there's going to be like probably beaver tree painting on some cottonwoods and remove the damaged ones. Um, I've used that ditch, but I probably am the only person in the last 25 years to use that ditch. So I'm wondering why we need to remove and like, why do we even need to remove damaged trees? Why don't we just let the beavers do their job and just 
let them do it, and why would we go to that cost and then take away that uh, micro ecosystem that happens with dying trees? So this is just a piece, this is one of those pieces that, you know, as you look at, like when we talk about managed environments yeah. that we live in for from plant habitat and everything else, those ditches are there. They were not there prior to a ditch company building that ditch mm -hmm. to deliver water to the reservoir that can then be used in our water storage system and move someplace else. So when those trees fall into that ditch, they back up and preclude water from moving through, which that means the ditch company has to come through and use equipment to get large trees out of a ditch on an unscheduled, unregulated timepiece. So um, if you talk to a ditch company, and it's, it's a very kind of delicate dance we do between trying to manage a really what is truly a non-native ecosystem because we didn't have those but we're 200 system. years into we it. We are, but now yeah. that but we're into it because we have ditch and water rights that say we have adjudicated water for a specific purpose to get from point A to point B. So if you're a ditch company, the easiest way to manage a ditch is cut everything down and have nothing there. And the state would agree with that because um, that water is meant to go to a farm out east, and if that cottonwood tree is sucking it up, there is a loss to the system on that. So we're always trying to find that balance of how do we manage an ecosystem that we have created over 200 years with water rights that are going back as long as that as well and also be able to maintain a water delivery system. Yeah. Good answer. <laughs> uh, thanks, Paige. So uh, the Lou Miller Park Renewal Project, I noticed that there is some delays on the playground equipment. Yep. I'm going to stop talking for a minute. Because Steve is going to be picking this well, is a piece too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What is it going to look like for the next couple months? Until, because spring 2023 is there are a bunch of now. So are we just going to be like, for the next? Just yeah. real quick, Steve will be taking on, again, I was trying to get things done um, in a timely manner and trying to meet deadlines. Steve is going to be taking on some of the door cap as well. So Steve's plate's going to be full. So I'm just. Um, well, I. I go to my first project meeting tomorrow, so I have a conversation with Kathy. There's still work to be done over the winter. Um, okay. There's still still a lot of, it's not just the playground, there's a lot of work done in the buildings. Um, lighting, um, there's opportunities to do some of the uh, reseeding or sodding this year still. So um, it's, but the project will be somewhat on hold through the, not through the winter, once the playground equipment comes. Now, depending on weather, that can go in in December, January, February. I don't know exactly what the date is offhand, but it's going to hold up doing some of the plant because you have to put the playground equipment in first, and you have to do the concrete, and you have to do the board and place surfacing, and then you do the landscaping irrigation around it. So you can't do the landscaping irrigation in December, so it's going to push some of the project until next spring, tying loose ends up that they couldn't do over the winter. But they're going to try to get as much done over the winter as they possibly can. Okay, got it. Thank you. I think my concern is just like we're just going to like have fencing and construction equipment there sitting for months because there will be fencing in, in that, that part through, through the, through the winter areas. but as we get areas buttoned up we'll open those up as well. That's it. I have just a couple questions. One I noticed it said that Boulder County is soliciting open space and trail grant requests and the staff would bring this to Crab in October. So why did Matt Dan not do that? Yeah, <laughs> that was one that should have fallen. That one probably should have fallen on my plate to do that. But I will look at Jim Crick, and we'll have something for this group by the next meeting. Okay, it says it's not due till February. February. So That's why I read that too. Like, yeah, we have a little time. <laughs> but I don't want to miss that. I don't that something. Where, where I thought I read that when I was reading online, but when I printed it out. Where, where is that falling? December, Dan's um, updates, what, I believe. Well, that was last month, too. There's two months we're looking at. What yeah. page in the 3,000 packet? Yeah. Page packet. <laughs> it was just a bullet under the updates. Okay. From a month ago, though, I thought. It was, okay. was it this well, latest one? It was one? from the one in this packet. Oh, okay. It, so it was, but he didn't update it before right. he left that uh, so. I know. That guy. What am I going to do? Welcome to his house, right up the hill, you know? Yeah. And then my other question was for you, Jeff, about it said ICE Pavilion sponsorships clarified and updated, and I just wondered what. That, I think that's on the dashboards, the signs on there. But did you, uh, like, are you getting new sponsors? or Because those signs don't have really that much. Do you have the answer to that? We're always getting new sponsors. <laughs> um, we have, there are new dashboards, so we're in contact with the 
current ones, um, and Sam Calhoun, who's kind of taken on our sponsorship realm of the Memorial Building, um, is allowing us to kind of explore additional additional venues for that, and um, not just on the National Forest, but uh, throughout the recreation section of the National Forest as well. So, is there someone that kind of goes around to businesses and like? She, she will. She, she's. That would be great. <laughs> she, she has her contacts and kind of nose, nose to the ground, um, looking for doubt. She has other responsibilities too. We don't have a marketing person in our so mm -hmm. we kind of do our best with it. And so we're not, we're not great at it. But she's a lot better than we've been before. So we're actually pretty excited going forward um, with developing some new opportunities. Mm -hmm. And what's her name? Sam Calhoun. She's a recreation coordinator. Okay. Sam also does living on the river, triathlon, long mile rides, triathlon, turkey trot. Strider Rider. Oh, that's a fun one. Okay. Um, yeah, I just long thought that there were probably untapped sponsorship opportunities for the ice pavilion, but someone has to ask. <laughs> yeah, there are untapped potentials, potential round recreation, but trying to find an opportunity to do it and have it fit with what we already have and, and you know, the vision for how things look um, is always a balance. Center banner tomorrow. Awesome. Great. Any other questions from the packet? If not, we can go to items from staff. All right. Uh, I will go first. So I'm going to give a little bit of an update on a topic that has not been approved by anyone yet, but is a topic <laughs> this group knows. Except for me. Long 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 um, <laughs> as this group knows, I, I have felt the frustration, as others in this room have felt the frustration of having park projects that have been out there for a long time and not being able to get them done. And part of that, you know, is the, the, the work that we've had going through basically Stephen County plus all the other assignments they've had within the city and then some of the complications of COVIDs and supply chains and other things that all project managers are dealing with right now. So. I was pretty clear to this group that my goal is to be asking for positions to help us with that. And this group recognized those positions were not funded and had questions about that as well. Um, but with that being said, Harold has really said he wants to see those projects be completed as well. He would like to see us get eight projects done in five years. And he thinks there's ways that we can do that with potentially different ways of packaging this up and putting it into a design bid process. Well, he didn't even basically say design bid process, but design build, design build process that would uh, give us a greater ability to bring in someone that has a lot of skill sets and big staff that can really take these on as something the way, like we did RSVP, where we had a large firm come in and be able to commit it to this project over a multi-year um, time frame. We've looked at that and we've said, okay, we'll take that and see how we can look at that and make that something that we could then represent. We basically have looked at clumping projects into um, finishing up projects that are already out there, there's a couple of those, finishing up some new neighborhood parks, finishing up some community parks, and then some large sports complex. And trail projects. And, and trail projects. So we've got them clumped into eight, plus not dropping some of the ones that are going right now. The place, the piece that I think this exercise allows us to go back to Harold and say, here's how we could do this. We have a, again a meeting with uh, purchasing and our business services um, staff as well because it's going to take not only an extra lift from this group but also from purchasing and doing things things that they probably haven't done in the past or don't have a lot of experience with and maybe even having to change some of those rules to allow us to do that. Looking at how we do funding that we specifically budget for a year but trying to commit to doing something over, over five years. There's a lot of unknowns in that but I think if we take on those unknowns, packages up, it allows us to get back and say, Harold, here's what we've looked at, here's how we can get from point A to point B, but here is the staffing we really need to make that happen. So it's just a, a he's left that door open. He hasn't said, come back and just say, you're gonna be have, bring it back and let me know how you're going to get there. 
Um, the other piece with that, because we have this backlog of project funds, that he can time that or fund that with some of the project cost. That way we don't have to time this with the budget cycle. So he feels comfortable that we could look at taking those positions that come up that we need to make this happen, um, that we could go through the, the funding cycle or the, um, the project funds to make that happen. So at this point, just want to kind of make sure that everyone's aware that we're moving that direction. We have a meeting tomorrow with Purchasing and Joni um, to kind of prepare to get our presentation ready for Harold. I'm sorry, Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah. So yes. you are thinking to hire staff. When you first started talking, I thought you were going to say bring in consultants to do this out of city staff people. Is so that, we, isn't that how Resilient St. Brain? Kind yeah, of so we bring in, so that's the piece we have to remember when people say bring in consultants to do this work. Josh is the city staff though that manages that contract and that's his full time job basically. So if you bring in an outside consultant, you oh, still I'm need fine. I'm just making sure I understand. You are thinking city employees. We will have to bring in at least some positions um, to, to make this happen. Great. Really manage that's that. what, uh, yeah, that's, I think our, the board generally has said, yeah, that's what we need. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You're just packaging it differently or We're trying, new we're trying to put in place to answer Hale's questions on how we can look at this differently, try something, instead of doing the same thing over again to come up with a different result, we're going to, to do this a little bit differently and this is the, the path we've taken. But to do that, there are definitely gaps in the, the ability for the current staff um, to make that happen. So we would have to go to say to make this a reality, we would need additional staff to make this work. It's very possible we'll have more information there tomorrow morning. Yeah, and I'm just gonna say, I appreciate Dave giving us this update. I mean, it was partly at my request because I saw that new positions had been requested for their department, but not um, approved by the council. And uh, I had some questions about that, and my understanding is that they were not approved and that there was a recommendation that some alternative approach. Just to clarify, they were never presented considered. to the council. Oh, it wasn't a matter of council not approving. Uh, the, the, what, what got to council was vetted in a way that the council never had a chance to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down on additional staffing in the project line. Thanks for the clarification. Mm -hmm. But, you know, my concern remains that this is a department that, that I think we've all agreed is significantly understaffed, really capacity limited. I mean, I'm all for, you know, trying new approaches, but I personally think it's going to be challenging even to do that kind of approach without, as you say, some new capacity. So, yeah, it won't I, yeah. I'll tell you that. <laughs> especially to manage the back end meeting. So, I mean, I'm hoping if the board continues to be interested that we can continue to get updates on this, including potentially an update based on your conversation with the city you, I know I'm getting the impression, but do you need want something from us as a board? At this point, no. I think you know it would be um, kind of working with Joey and Harold and seeing where this goes. And I, I think if um, it moves in that direction, and this group sh again is kind of maintaining its Thanks, no, recognition we, that that these are important pieces for the community. I think that's always something. This this group is good at saying that we are here for a reason. It's because we appreciate our parks, our open space, and greenways, and we would like. Keep putting pressure on me. That's the best you can do is say, hey, we get your stuff done and I can show up at Harold saying we're being asked to complete projects as quickly as we can. Well, we could make the meeting go really late on well, Dave's account. I was thinking doesn't maybe we make could something invite Harold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, invite him. Okay. Oh. Well, I yeah. do think we should consider, depending on how your meeting goes, if we could have, you know, if it's Harold or Joni or someone, if there's a different approach that would be valuable for Carl to take care of. If you could let us help somehow, yeah, I'd we'd like that. to help, I guess. Yes, is that that's what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The nice thing is I think the enthusiasm is there. If we can make the numbers work and the staffing work and everything, I think from, from Harold and leadership, I think the enthusiasm is there. The same enthusiasm this board has. Um, yeah, well, when you told us you had all this money but couldn't spend it fast enough, we're like, that's crazy. You know, every <laughs> year I've been here, there's always tough decisions about how many more staff to add. Right. Everyone has their requests. That's so so crazy. <laughs> we, uh, we didn't get it this year. So, so Jeff, just to remind me of something that, like, I've thrown Joni's name out a couple of times. I think this group is probably, you know, known who Dale Rademacher has been in the back in the past. I wish the um, 
FGC manager you know, was in charge of PWNR when this, this group was really reporting to public works and natural resources. Through some of the reorganization, this group now re reports to external services, which is Joni Marsh, and she's the assistant city manager um, in charge of external services. So um, she has come from a planning background, and she's got some creative ways of looking at things and looking at funds rather as Jeff also reports to her. So there's recreation funds, there's park development fees, and she's looking at different ways of using some of those dollars that maybe we haven't always looked at, I think, in more of a holistic way. Because Jeff has always been the same thing, saying that, you know, get those parks built. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is a good question. Who is this? Who is Harold? City Council. Okay. All right. Just, just check. So I'm going to just open. Yeah. Uh, you asked what do they need? Did they need anything from you? The answer was no. Uh, I, I need something from you. Uh, the council needs. Something. Ah. Okay. Um, uh, Harold, I, I hope he feels under the gun. If Harold were here, I would say it exactly the same way. That I hope Harold feels under the gun to present to the council uh, a list of accomplishments that we're going to see in parks, in park development in 2023. Uh, not to put more pressure on that man right there or on either of these two fellows. Um, but the, the expectation is that if we didn't add the fourth FTE that he requested, I think it was four, um, and I made my own recommendations, right, in terms of staffing in, in, in uh, the parks department. If we're not going to add personnel, that doesn't mean anybody's off the hook to produce. Right. We've got a 20 year, $18 million and a 20 year backlog that has to be cleared. So the way it's going to get cleared is, is taking a different approach to staffing. We give him what he needs and we give David some additional staffing that they'll buy out of capital improvement budgets, I guess. I mean, I don't know if that's the way it's going to work or not or design build process. But that doesn't mean we don't, need, we don't owe it to you and to them, our pickleball community, and to the rest of our recreation right. community, clarity on what you can expect this year. And I hope you show up every quarter to the council meetings in 2023. I'm expecting that list in the first part of December. We, we're going to vote on a budget before we get a list. <laughs> and I've already, I've, I've, in, my public, in the public meeting, I said, you know what, you're going to want to vote prior to the time we get the list. I, I'll vote for the budget, but I'm going to do it with a caveat we're going to get a list in the interest of accountability. Right. What the city's accountable for, right. two parks, this advisory board, to our recreation community, pickleball players and others. What, what you can expect from us in 2023. But the understanding that nothing's perfect and if we don't get it all done, we damn well better account for what we did and what we learned and what we're going to get done in 2024. Because what we've been doing up to this point, we just keep adding more to his plate, without the, the personnel to get it done, is simply not fair, right. and it's um, it's not only really fair, it's not clear, it's not it's not as genuine as it should be right in the whole budgeting process. So the way we've been doing it, we're not going to do anymore, right, as far as I'm concerned, and I think that's shared by other council members. So, so that's where you can help, is to not let anybody off the hook hold me accountable. You're going you're to hold these guys accountable because you get a shot at them every month. Don't let this council off the hook. Show up at least quarterly. Just clear, just curious, where are we with this list of projects? Um, what can we expect over the next quarter? So when we're here, you can you can report to us. Ah, okay. So I'm happy to, anybody want to have a cup of coffee and talk about the questions to ask or how to nuance it on the <laughs> I just think um, we need to be much clearer and way more aggressive than what we've been. And I and it's not this these fellows who are not, these are not the problem. And, I, and, it, and the city's not the problem. It's all good people. But it's a bunch of priorities that, you know, get on the table and they get vetted. And in this case, the additional staffing that David needed got vetted out. So we never yeah, we never see that, right? So and the kids who does Harold report to, we can undo months of work in the budget by the time it gets to us. That's simply not going to make the city work well. So that's, it's not as easy as, as um, picking at it when it comes to the, in a public meeting after all the work that these people have put in. But um, something has to change. So we're going to rattle it up a little bit. And I appreciate that. And I come here and ask that question, not just the council, but of us saying it's, it's our meeting and where are you guys at and what's happening? Because as uncomfortable as that can be when we're not there, 
I will tell you that having to show up at Fox and Meadows one more year and tell them that you're one more year out, that's even... <laughs> so you're sending me. I'm going to be next week. Thank you. No, it's in the park. It's park is, it's Fox Meadows. It's, it's uh, Clover Basin. It's, yeah. You know, I, have, I, 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 I said this in, in a public meeting. I'm just not doing that anymore. It's in the queue. It's in the budget. Hang on. Because you're going to be hanging on for the oh, rest of your life. Your, your comment that it's not the system as it's currently set up is not fair, not working, a demonstrated failure over the last two decades or more. Yeah, and I'm way outside, I'm certain my role as a liaison right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just think these guys need that kind of support, right? Not okay. pressure on them. The pressure needs to be um, at a level that helps to mobilize on procurement, you know, or the city attorney's office. I don't know how much of this goes to the city of attorney. It's where every idea goes to die is in the city <laughs> attorney's office. So, and I like Eugene, I'm just saying. It's like a black box. It's like stuff goes there, and, and you got to keep pounding the table to get it out of there. Yeah, that's just the way it works. Uh -huh. So um, you can really help. Yeah. David and I will have camera love with all this. for Harold. <laughs> <laughs> what you say, Jeff? I said we both love working for Harold. <laughs> you should. You should. I mean, he's doing, he does it. He's doing a terrific job. There's just a lot of forces at work. Oh, absolutely. And this, and this just needs to be, we just um, need to be real clear. He just yeah. wanted that on camera. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> Broke the fourth wall there. And <laughs> <laughs> looked right at the camera yeah, yeah. when you said that. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I'm glad to hear that you think that there's the awareness and intention because I think, you know, my concern is that it's not recognized, it's not appreciated, and like the, the value of actually having, you know, on staff you know, in-house capacity, even if you're going to work with contractors or try things a different way, you still need in-house capacity. And if you're going to look at grants, you know, grant funding doesn't generally cover staffing. So right. that usually needs to be like a city appropriation in order to get bring in that grant funding. So Tim has done a very nice job of representing you at the council. Pretty ineffective, <laughs> pretty ineffective however, because uh, we're having this conversation. So. so. Thank you for providing that update, yeah, sure. and we can Great. continue to have this conversation, hopefully, and we'll look to you to keep us up to date, and we'll go to council meetings. We will. <laughs> <laughs> Any other items from staff? Any items from the board? I have uh, two folks from the community who have talked to me about they both slipped and fell riding on the trail uh, along the St. Brain after a rain. It was on July 27th. One of them separated her shoulder and the other broke her leg. And it was because mud ran under the, you know, the rain fell, it, it goes down underneath the bridges and they're probably going too fast. But they wonder, is that whose responsibility is to clean or how often does that happen or you know what I mean? I've ridden on all the underpasses, and I don't remember that one that day. A cone did appear a week or two later. So somebody, I mean, I don't know if they did or whoever reported it, but I'm just wondering, is that something that's patrolled, and I want to get back to them, these two people. Hey, this is what happens. You know, after a rain, be careful, because it takes three weeks before the mud is shoveled out. Or who, who, Is that you guys? Yeah, that, that would be... Um, chamber and parks operations staff that reports to me. So um, typically, you know, our process, that's a good piece. I don't have a good answer for right now. And Steve did it wrong. It's been looking at But we, we, our first piece was during that rain, see the water on the trail, we close those gates. Right. When the water recedes, we then open those gates. No other price some debris there. So I, I'm after not sure where. We don't open the gates until after it's cleaned up. Okay. Well, so, so maybe this yeah. missed that opening, closing. Yeah. I don't know. I'd be curious um, which underpass it was. This is at County Line Road. Uh, and it goes yeah. up, takes yeah. that sharp exactly. right, yeah. and all that kind of thing. So it's not construction related. No. Um, yeah, you know, we have a limited maintenance staff as they, well, and they're trying to get eyes on all of our system as frequently as they possibly can. Okay. I don't know the frequency that we have our operations staff drive the entire Greenway Trail, but I can tell you that one good thing that's come out of what we've done this year is that we have a ranger program now, so now we have more eyes on our trails, and hopefully that communication is there to be able to, you know, if Bryce were out and saw a dangerous condition, he would be able to report it to Timber, get it addressed, rather than just waiting for somebody to go by and see it. 
Well, so my answer to them in the short term was, you guys could go on to the either the phone number or the web page and report this. Right. Unfortunately, after doing that from the ER, it doesn't give you much satisfaction. Right. So you know, if you first, you know, you got to go slower on a rainy or a post rainy day and then yeah. report it, sort of thing. But I'm just curious. So ASAP, but that might take. Days or weeks. I can tell you we don't sweep our entire trail system on a weekly basis. Right. Gotcha. And I think the other piece is too is that what I, I'm hearing is kind of something when they open that gate up, if there's debris on it that they can see that looks like this could be a hazard, I'm sure that's gonna be clear before that gate gets open. Okay. If you're seeing that silt, that's what probably the slippery stuff. Probably that that's thin, what it was. silty layer that's on there's maybe a you know less than a quarter inch thick when that that stuff is that kind of, sort of that clay slippery stuff that could be something that, you know, um, well, I doubt we look through there. It's clear there's no debris. There's nothing on that. And then, sorry, right, thanks. Timber and at seeds. least I'll yeah. present it. I can tell these folks. You know, we'll see what yeah. happens. We also yeah. present to them that a lot of our underpasses were made as flood control. That we secondarily get to use them as recreation, but their primary purpose is flood control. I think anybody who's going that fast on the rec path is already a problem. So I, I'm I trying have, to be yes. nice. That's a, well, well, I mean, and just explain to them that that's what it is and that if, that, you know, that hopefully that we can always continue to use it as a recreation right. option just to keep the litigious thoughts yeah, I away. think they're, yeah. Thank you. I, I'll get back to them. Any other items from the board? How do we do? Yeah. I'm sorry, I have one more. Acting. Acting. Is that you're going to keep acting and sitting at the table here, or then <laughs> taking over, or what's the? Uh, well, I get it right. <laughs> <laughs> well, the position there is a new position that's been created for community services. So let me back up a little bit. Karen Roney was the director of the community services department for many years. She retired end of March. Harold has determined that department is too large and it's going to be split up into two pieces. One being recreation, library, museum, and the other senior services, children, youth, and family, uh, housing, and what was the administration. Currently, Joni Marsh, who David talked about, has posted both of those positions and I have applied for the Rec Library Museum position. The deadline for that is tomorrow. Um, once I determine if I am selected to move permanently into that role, recreation will need to have a new recreation and golf manager, which Ben is acting in that role right if you get this position, you won't come to this board yes, anymore? Yes, I will continue to be here. <laughs> All right. I was going to have to help. Yeah. That's right. I was going to go in there. <laughs> no, I will continue to do that. So. Okay. So you that's... Want, this group might want to know, uh, that job was only posted internally, correct? Yes. The other job was posted both internally and externally. Correct. So it's a reflection, to some degree, yeah. on what people... They have somebody in mind. What the, the quality of the job being done right now. Right. Are you looking for a motion, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> so could you guys, though, as you're talking about that, talk about how what is the connection between sort of natural resources and then the city parks? Right. So external services, Joni is the assistant uh, city manager for that. David and I now are both in the same department or under external services, which we haven't been... Uh, aligned since 2003. Six, seven? That three. was three? Really? Yeah. Was that? That was later. The year after the recreation center was built, um, Parks and Rec was split. Um, recreation was moved into community services. Um, what was community development became public works and natural resources. So we've worked close together, but now we have um, somebody that will help us work in the same direction. Uh, David and I, fortunately, have always worked very closely together, but the goals that the department he was in and the department that I was in didn't always go the, the same direction. And now working for Joni, I think that we'll have some 
guidance that's alike and we'll, we'll see better things come from both of our areas. And so, that yeah. won't change with this no, split no. within the No, so parks will stay over, over with the natural resources group as well. Yep. Okay. You don't become his boss or vice versa. No. Got it. No. Thanks. Any other? I'm just curious. Sorry, are you going to come to these meetings too? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I am Here's a softball. Whack! <laughs> <laughs> I'll go where I'm needed. <laughs> yeah, I would appreciate uh, David for the help. Uh, I need uh, help on uh, a ton uh, artificial turf has to be delivered to the dry field, and he immediately came for the help that day. Very welcome. It was a volunteer coordinated project, they didn't have all the coordination it needed, so I coordinated it. So yeah, they, they did a great job and it, it turned out fine, so thank you. So describe it, what's, what's changed? Um, so the Dry Creek Park has a cricket pitch and it has a uh, 100 by 15 feet artificial turf, has to be glued. As of when? It, it's there? Yeah, it is there. Wow. It's always been there. It's been no, but not this latest, you're saying something new. No, it's not new. Oh, yeah, the, the new turf the, on the concrete yeah. that they use for the pitch was replaced. Ah, okay. Yeah. Well, I remember the thing before. I thought maybe you expanded the field or something. So yeah. you just replaced what you had. Gotcha. Don't Thank put you. ideas in his head. <laughs> <laughs> so every five minutes, it right. has to be replaced. Okay. And again, just like with the new park piece, that operational piece sometimes through the backlog too. And I think we had a great volunteer group who was willing to contribute some time and effort to get something done. Um, and I, it, it just lined up with trying to achieve a goal that we all wanted to get done. Yeah, For the next day was the rain, so I wanted to do something that day, otherwise, if it was the rain, the glue was. No, oh, yeah, I went out and looked at it, it looked really good. Thank you. You're welcome. I would like to give Julian some room to Taylor. Um, that the volunteer coordination, has, it's a model for, I work with other cities and their recreation programs, and it's such a, it's such a model. Um, she's doing a killer job of that, and it's so easy to volunteer, and so rewarding, and you know, all the places I volunteer, the follow-up is fast, and she like caters to your volunteer needs, it's, it's awesome. Well, thank you. She's been great, and that all goes back to Dr. Waters helping kind of push that volunteer program too. Because the city had one early on when I got here; it had been um, kind of dismantled. And I, I knew it was a piece that Longmont really wanted, and uh, we used the Rose Gardens kind of to kick off as a demonstration of that. And it has done a great job. And mm -hmm. Yeah. Having worked with the county and saw how many Longmont volunteers showed up at county events, and knowing we had so much work. Here in, in our own community, it's like we have a, just a great untapped resource, and the community has been great. Now we need that in like all the different <laughs> sectors of the city because I just hear so much stuff or we need, and there's there it, there so many people are willing to help in so many different ways, and so volunteer coordinators for the biggest thing we need. Awesome. Yeah, we got Taylor when she was brand new, and she thought we'd come back. Yeah. To give them I will be asking, she does, maybe I'll invite her here, but it also we do a volunteer appreciation when she's a slideshow on, on kind of all the, the projects they've done. So we could either do a sample of that or we could just have people show up to that too and see what we need to get out for you and stuff, people that show up. So. I was actually trying to get her to coordinate a project that would be for this, for next meeting, for a group that I have. And then maybe she'd want to come over here if I did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Like I have, uh, Teenagers come to the group soon. Now we can buy for, especially now that we're back in our close quarters. Right. <laughs> I mean, no, it's good for them. It's yeah. not that exciting. It's really for our teenagers. Okay. Any other items? If not, we can have a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. We have a second. Sneak the switch. <laughs> 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 All right. All those in favor? All right. All right. We need to turn. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Good job, team. Good job.
better be back in. Yeah. 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 Yeah.